The sad truth about Memorial Day is that it reminds us that we're all one because we all end up in a grave. That is, of course, unless you are Jesus, you end up there and then you leave it. And that's what we celebrate in baptism. Yes, part of baptism is remembering death because you come out of the waters of baptism with a new life in Christ. You have a path now to follow that is free from the fear of death. Hmm. That is a challenge for all of us. And that is a call for us to walk the marginal way. strong and clear ringing out far and near letting justice roll down let justice roll down like a rush of a stream comes a powerful dream Let justice roll down. Let justice roll down. The life of Jesus was a vision of a coming day when power is displayed not with military might but through the solidarity of all people in the name of love and justice. We pray this day for a time when we are one and we support one another on the road of life. Not tear one another down because of our differences. We will affirm our oneness with the whole human family this day in our common work for justice. living and justice making God. We follow you this day. May peace flow. Let justice roll. Give us courage for the path and a heart for one another. May peace flow. Let justice roll. We yearn for your reign and we proclaim the day is coming. May peace flow. Let justice roll.
everybody. Remember, we are working in this series on building our church, and we're spending time thinking about letting go of things and deciding what we want to hold on to instead. So let's say our prayer together responsibly. Here we go. We hold on to power. We hold on to greed. We hold on to things that we don't really need. We hold on to hatred. We hold on to fear. And we close ourselves off till we can't feel you near. Open our hands, Lord. Help us let go. Open our minds so your justice may flow. Open us up so your peace can pour through. And make our hearts ready so we can hold you. Amen. Nice job, everybody. All right. I have a new tool in my toolbox today for building our church. Remember, in our toolbox, we have our name tags because God knows each of our names and loves us just as we are. And we're all welcome here. And we have our box of tissues because all feelings are okay. We have our instruments to write wonderful things and our eraser if we make mistakes, which happens, and th those are okay here too. And we have our enter sign to remember that we aren't exiting the church building, we are entering the world to do God's work. And now today we have our new tool. It's a roll of tape. Now, this tape is often used to make lines on floors, lines to, I don't know, get into places. Um, in school, we often have lines in the hallways, right? Go down this line to go this way in the hall, take this line to go the other way in the hall, line up before you go somewhere, lines. Lots of people like lines. Some people really enjoy a good line, other people, not so much, not for them. It's kind of hard to be in a line sometimes. Jesus was always blurring lines. <laughs> That's what we call it when you don't sort of do what is expected or follow what everyone else is doing. Jesus talked about lines um, and he didn't like them very much. He didn't like the way that lines sometimes can separate people into us and them. Jesus wanted us all to be one. And he especially didn't like lines that said some people were first and others were last. Jesus said there is no first and last. We're all the same. So I was thinking about taking this tape out of our toolbox, but then I noticed something about this tape. Do you see the shape? of the roll. This shape, I think, is more what Jesus was talking about, that we work together equally important as if we're in a circle, not a line. Now, we can't join hands and get into a circle. <laughs> we're not here with each other. But imagine that we are. Imagine that we could all Join our hands together, make a big circle. Would there be a first? Would there be a last? Nope, there sure wouldn't be. So I'm gonna keep this roll of tape in our toolbox just so we can look at the shape and remember, working together is the best way to be. Hmm. I'm gonna say a prayer 
So I want you to close your eyes and I want you to imagine while you're praying that your hands are connected to my hands, to your family's hands, to your friend's hands, to people that might be here in the church building, to all the people that might be watching this at their homes, on their computers or phone screens. Imagine that we're all holding hands as we pray. Ready? Lord, bless these hands that they may work to connect with others. Connect in justice, connect in peace, connect in love. Amen. Bye, everybody. Let the desert and the wilderness exalt. Let the Araba rejoice and bloom like a crocus. Let it blossom profusely. Let it rejoice and sing for joy. The glory of Lebanon is bestowed on it, the splendor of Carmel and Sharon. They will see the glory of Yahweh, the splendor of our God. Strengthen all weary hands, steady all trembling knees, Say to all those of faint heart, Take courage, do not be afraid. Look, Yahweh is coming. Vindication is coming. The recompense of God. God is coming to save you. Then the eyes of the blind will be open. The ears of the deaf will be unsealed. Then those who cannot walk will leap like deer, and the tongues of those who cannot speak will sing for joy. Waters will break forth in the wilderness, and there will be streams in the desert. The scorched earth will become a lake, the parched land spring of water. The lairs where jackals used to dwell will become thickets of reeds and papyrus. And through it all will run a highway, a road called the sacred path. The unclean may not travel by it, but it will be for God's people alone and no traveler, not even fools, will go astray. No lions will be there, nor will any fierce beasts roam about it. But the redeemed will walk there, for those whom Yahweh has ransomed will return. They will enter Zion shouting for joy, with everlasting joy on their faces. Joy and gladness will go with them, and sorrow and lament will flee away. different the prayers the same with humble spirit can we believe that God is bigger than we conceive the day is coming Lord will with a hand of justice and a heart of love the will of heaven on this earth be done the day is coming lo let it come with willing spirits Lord, let us stare to kneel with strangers and join in prayer. Grant in your mercy the hope that heals the law of love your word reveals. The day coming Lord will move with hand of justice and a heart of love the will of heaven on this earth be done 
the day is coming oh let it come in this series we have been considering baptism and our vows at the time of baptism today i want us to look at the metaphor of baptism being entering the tomb with Jesus, coming out of the water, rising with Christ. You can imagine that those early converts to Christianity who were training throughout Lent to be baptized on Easter would hear those words of dying with Christ in order to rise with Christ with a bit of trepidation, a bit of anxiety. What sort of initiation ritual were they about to take on? Well, of course, what they were about to do was something metaphorical. Most of our language of faith is metaphorical, and for good reason, because we are trying to describe the indescribable. We are attempting to get close to describing something that is beyond our wildest imagination. And so we use metaphor and analogy. We hope for an understanding, but we don't claim knowledge. The Bible is filled with metaphorical language. It is by necessity. You know, if you want to take the Bible seriously, you really cannot take it literally. If you take the Bible literally, where do you locate this city with streets of gold behind some pearly gates, with a tree of life and where the sun never sets? Obviously, we're painting a picture of something that we call heaven, but we don't know exactly where it is or how it works. In fact, none of us can say with certainty what happens after death. We just don't know. What we do have is faith. We trust that whatever happens after this life is good. We're making a choice when we make those faith statements. We are choosing to believe in a loving God who desires to have us reunite, to be with our Creator again. And because we don't know what happens after death, and because loss and grief is so devastating, we lean hard into faith. We choose to believe that there is a heaven and that it will be filled with joy. Consider the question one of my colleagues just got asked after preaching a sermon about heaven. He was asked, will I see my cat in heaven? <laughs> now, the honest answer would be, I have no idea. But clearly, the question came from a place of loss and hurt. And what was needed was a loving response. And indeed, the answer is, of course you will see your cat. If that is what brings you joy, that is what will happen because heaven is this joyous experience of being in God's presence and experiencing all of the gifts that God wants to give you. That's what heaven is. And that happens not only after death, but this is what Jesus told us was breaking in and was here and now. It was close at hand if we could repent, change our minds, see things in a new way so that we might experience heaven. And Jesus wasn't asking anyone to suspend reason, to make room for something supernatural. Granted, Jesus performed miracles. He healed and he multiplied food. He did things to care for people, showing them the power of God. And so people would listen. But then he said, if you have the understanding, the metaphorical eyes to see, the metaphorical ears to hear, you will experience heaven. And that was not a new message. 
There was not something new being said here. This passage that we read in Isaiah speaks of the desert blooming, the people returning to Zion, going home to be with God. And it is a journey, a journey through a barren wilderness, a hard, hard time. And friends, we know just by opening a newspaper or turning on the evening news that there are hard, hard times all around us the incomprehensible grief of having your child killed at school. It's just beyond the pale. No one should ever have to go through that sort of grief. But people do all too often. And so we have words of comfort from Scripture calling us to faith, not faith that involves our belief in a system or a doctrine. No, faith that is trust. Trust in the one who is making a path through the wilderness. Trust in the one who says the rains will come and the deserts will bloom again. And the beauty of that will be beyond our imagining. It will be brilliant. And maybe we can only imagine it when we're in this difficult and hard path. But knowing that it is a path and knowing that there is one who has gone this way before us is the promise of our faith. It's the promise we claim in baptism. It's why we take on this new identity as a Christian, one who is like Christ, a disciple. And disciples follow. And there is such good news in this passage, saying that the desert will bloom, goodness will abound, joy will be ours if we stay on the path. And you might say, well, there's the rub, isn't it? It's always about the work, traveling the path, doing the hard work of what faith demands of us, these disciplines. Well, as true as that may be, the good news in this passage is that knowing it's lost. Isaiah said, even a fool will find the way. God's redeemed may be a bit foolish for believing in this overwhelming love of God when all around us there are no signs of it, at least not now, and at least not if we don't have the understanding of faith. And if we do, well, then we have hope. Then we can know some taste of joy now, even in our sorrows, because the kingdom of heaven is breaking in, has broken in. And so it falls to us to believe that joy is ours, that Suffering may last the night, but the joy comes in the morning. And there is always a morning because the sun has always risen and the sun will rise again. And if that sun is the child of God, then we might know that for eternity we will live in that light. Amen. We come before you, God of justice, with varying degrees of readiness to walk hand in hand in the march for love. Yet we know that your forgiveness is unending and we can join the parade at any moment. Open us to know your unconditional love based not on our readiness, but in your surprising grace. Move us closer to compassion and courage. Courage to speak up and stand up for what is right and good.
justice roll like an ever flowing stream flowing stream roll down I have a prayer this morning it's from the Church of England composed by the Right Reverend Robert Atwell, Bishop of Exeter and Chair of Liturgical Services. Everlasting God, whose spirit broods everlastingly over the lands and the waters, and endows them with form and color, give us, we pray, the mind and heart to rejoice in the majesty of creation. Teach us to be responsible stewards of this world and to seek the common good. And through your blessings all may flourish, and creation sing your praise in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The backstory of the anthem today is that that song by Tom Waits apparently was written as the thoughts of the angel of death showing up at the end of people's lives and frustrated that they hadn't lived their lives, that there was so much left to do. And what are the words of advice that the, day, the angel of death would then give? There's always time to love. Love. Take the time to love. Do it now. Do it often. That's the gift of the life that we have. That is what we honor and embrace this day. That's what we celebrate in our baptism, that we have been born to new life, which is a life that gives us all the opportunity to love because love is God because God is love. So let us live our lives giving glory to this God in all the ways that we might possibly give, knowing God the creator, who knows even the sparrow that falls, knowing Christ among the stranger who appears to us at the least, the last and the lost, and knowing the Holy Spirit of God who is the wild goose leading us on a chase into those places where we will not go without that incentive, without that drive, without that joy of discovery. So know the blessings of our God and may the love of our God be with you all and all those whom you love and all those whom none but God loves now and until that day of God's judgment when justice will roll down like waters and peace will blossom among all the peoples. Amen. And the smart money's on Harlem And the moon is in the stream And the shadow boys keep breaking all the laws And you're east of East St. Louis And the wind is making speeches And the rain sounds like a round of applause and Napoleon is weeping in a carnival saloon His invisible fiance is in the mirror And the band is going home, it's raining hammers, it's raining nails Is it true there's nothing left for him down here? And it's time Time, time And it's time, time, time And it's time, time, time That you love And it's time, time, time Well, we'll all pretend we're orphans And the memory's like a train you can see it getting smaller as it pulls away 
And the things you can't remember Tell the things you can't forget That history puts a saint In every dream So she said she'd stick around Until the bandages came off But these mama boys just don't know when to quit so Matilda asks those sailors, are those dreams or are those prayers? So close your eyes, son, this won't hurt a bit. And it's time, time, time. And it's time, time, time. And it's time. That you love and it's time 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 it's time 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 that you love and it's time time time